Hey everyone, Dr. Bloxham has finally shared his fifth month update of the clinical trial that he's doing the micro trial in his own practice and uh, the results are a little bit confusing. Some of you have been sending me emails about what these results actually mean, what these photographs actually mean and I'm going to discuss all of this with you guys here on this video. Uh, for those who have been following me for so long, I've been off of YouTube for five months now, four months, and uh, I'm really tempted to share with you guys uh, where I've been, why I have been off of YouTube for so long, but uh, I'm gonna leave that for another video. For now, let's just stay concise to the subject of vertoporfin. A lot of interesting stuff in the whole hair transplant and hair loss industry as a whole. We've got new uh, results of pyrolutamide or should I say not results but the report published by the uh, mother company of pyrolutamide Kintro Pharma and a lot of confusion over there because the report mentioned that there was no significant statistical significance in the phase 3 clinical trial in China and some people were confused about that term statistical significance clinical significance what the difference uh, is and I'm gonna uh, do a video, a separate video about that, maybe next next week or the week after. Also, some promising other compounds like HMI-115 and the positive results that we got in its uh, phase one clinical trial. And uh, overall, what does the pyrolutamide uh, setback mean for the Kintro Pharma and for the development of other compounds for androgenetic alopecia? We know that uh, Kintro Pharma is also developing another compound which goes by the name GT20029, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, a lot of people had this skepticism that if pyrolutamide that we know has the biological plausibility in terms of uh, how it works and treating androgenic alopecia, and if pyrolutamide came back to be non effective in treating hair loss, maybe we got something wrong about the core theory behind hair loss a lot of interesting stuff debates on reddit the hair restoration network forum all over the internet so uh, we're gonna cover all of that in the next upcoming months i'm gonna try to as much as i can uh go back on the horse <laughs> as you say i go back to uh, my regular scheduling program uh one video a week so yeah let's 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 just see how it goes for now let's let's begin checking out the photographs so without further ado, this is one patient that Dr. Bloxham shared with us. Uh, this is his untreated region, so uh, he did uh, a FUT scar on these patients and he treated one, loca one location of that scar with vertoporfin and one with placebo so that we can see the difference between the two. And this is one of the patients. He did the uh, this vertoporfin micro trial, I think on five patients or four patients of his. So this is one of them, uh, and as we see, if you zoom in here in the treated region, you can see less of a uh, erythema, less of a reddish coloring of the skin, which may indicate a uh, a uh, more of a healthier tissue regeneration. If you're biased, but if you're trying to be uh, as neutral as you can, you could you could really see nothing from this picture. So let's just go to the next patient or this I think is this is a zoom up of the same patient and uh, we see a little tiny tiny hairs popping up from the scar. And if you uh, watch my previous videos about vertoporfin and uh, the whole idea behind it, a scar tissue differs from the normal epithelial tissue by basically three criteria its elasticity the presence of uh, uh, hair follicles and sebaceous glands and the whole idea behind vertoporfin is that we want the hair that we harvest from the donor area we want that harvesting to not cause the creation of scar tissue because that's the whole problem behind hair transplants right uh, we harvest hairs from the back of the head the uh, tissue in the back of the head grows back to be a scar tissue that doesn't have any hair follicles and we have uh, we end up with limited limited number of hairs that we can transplant in uh, a patient's lifetime so uh, vertoporfin blocks one of the pathways that leads to the activation of scar tissue regeneration and the whole idea behind it is that after we finish harvesting the hairs and transplanting them on top the hair in the back will start to grow back again 
So from this picture, I mean, yeah, you could you could argue that there are some hairs over there popping off, some tiny little hairs, but it's nothing nothing too amazing. Okay, we could expect uh, much more than this in the fifth month uh, target. But uh, let's uh, let's just go to the next picture. This is the next picture. This is I think uh, another zoom up, zoom picture, and uh, we could see the entry to the placebo area in the middle and uh straight white pale tissue over there uh which is characteristic of a normal scar tissue in the five month ish area uh and this is the treated the treated regions uh on the sides and you could argue the one on the right there are some uh, more uh hairs popping off from the scar tissue but nothing too crazy okay i i don't really see uh dr block some more mentioning here in this video that he thinks this is a, an indication that the drug is working, but I really don't want to be that biased towards vertiporfin. I would say we, we, still, we still, still don't have anything in our hands right now. Uh, and for comparison, this, these are the pictures from the third or the second month update. And some of these pictures really looked amazing. I mean, this one, you could see uh, obviously some hairs popping off from the scar. So you do, you would imagine that in this particular patient, after five months, you would see more. You would see those little hairs popping off, uh, uh, having more density, having more of a darkish appearance. But yeah, unfortunately, you can't say, see that in the fifth month uh, point. There's another picture, some hairs popping off in the treated area. Again, this is the second month. And I'm only showing you these pictures to give you an idea that the drug is probably not given its full effects. Do not even say that it's not given any effect at this point. Should we conclude that vertoporfin is a hozo and that it doesn't work at all? I think we should give it more time. I think we should give it at least six months or one year or even one year and a half. We know that scar modeling goes up to even two years so that the scar will get smaller and uh, defined and remodeled. Uh, this is the physiologic, uh, this is how our bodies work, our, uh, how our bodies remodel and make the scar as beautiful as it can because, you know, scar tissue is ugly, <laughs> let's be honest. And uh, yeah. So my conclusion from all of this, I wouldn't really say that we have positive results from vertoporfin, neither negative results. I think we should wait. I think we should wait again for the one year, one year and a half point, and then we'll reassess. But for now, uh, I wouldn't say unfortunately yet, but we, we, don't have any, we don't have anything in our hands right now. And just to give you an idea, guys, just to give you an idea about scar tissues, I gladly should I say I have a scar tissue from a past operation that I did on my knee and I'm gonna show you that right now so that you will get an idea about how scar tissues actually really don't have any hairs in them see this one I have a really hairy leg as you see but this particular area the area that has the scar the incision the surgery incision has no hairs I'll try to zoom in the editing but uh, zero hairs popping off from the scar tissue. I saw a lot of you guys discussing on Reddit, discussing on different forums that uh, this is bad news, that this is the worst news. Some of you guys were even devastated. Some of you had said that we should eliminate now vertoporfin as a potential hair loss treatment. And some of you have the different uh, uh, response on the spectrum. So. It's a controversial topic, but in my opinion, we should wait. Uh, not even do an assessment right now. Just wait. Uh, Dr. Bloxham will hopefully keep sharing monthly updates and monthly photographs, and we will wait and assess. And uh, in one year, we will reevaluate. And that's that's. Uh, I really want to. <laughs> I really want to sit here, guys, and tell you that uh, we just injected one microgram of vertoporfin and we got a uh, a tree of hairs coming out of that donor area but that's just simply not the truth uh, that's not the truth and i think that's not how our bodies work and that's not how we should set our expectations okay science takes time and uh, we should be optimistic but neutral and not biased in the same time so this is all i wanted to talk about today uh, feel free to welcome me back in the comment section. I'll 
make sure to uh, respond to as much comments as I can and uh, suggest in the comment section also what videos you want to see next. And with that being said, I'm really happy to be back and uh, I'm gonna be heading to the gym right now and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, stay safe.